Yesterday was a busy day, talking with people preparing for lawmakers to head back to the Illinois State Capitol. Today, tomorrow, and Thursday, a lot they've got to tackle, and we'll talk about some of it with the Health Care Right of Conscience Act. The proposed legislation is going to be heard today. Uh, that could change the Health Care Right of Conscience Act, but uh, how is the Health Care Right of Conscience Act being used? We'll hear from the Liberty Justice Center a little bit later on this hour. Uh, but right now, let's talk about daycares across the state being mandated by the governor on Friday to get the COVID-19 vaccine for their employees or to have their employees test regularly. This is a mandate, the latest in a series that the governor's issued. Um, he's got issued uh, mandates for uh, educators, K through college for college students for healthcare workers uh, he's also got uh, vaccine mandates now for uh, nearly 10,000 state employees uh, most recently getting uh, agreements with unions representing Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs employees uh, but also agreements uh, with others uh, for nearly 10,000 state workers but workers with the Illinois Department of Corrections and the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice uh, still holding out and apparently they're going to go to some kind of arbitration uh, so that's the latest on the governor's COVID-19 mandates. Uh, but when it comes to the daycares and those licensed facilities across the state, 55,000 employees could be impacted at over 2,800 different daycare operations. One of the uh, uh, daycare organizations, the associations that represents daycares, uh, the Illinois owners and operators of day of child care centers, uh, I talked with the president of that organization, Sarah Stoliker, yesterday, and I shared that conversation with you. Uh, and she says that uh, you know they they've got some uh, serious concerns about the governor's mandate that was issued on Friday. Here's some of that conversation uh, with Sarah Stoliker here on the WMAY Morning News Feed of the pandemic and throughout, there hasn't been a single major outbreak from an Illinois daycare. Um, and really this is attributed to that we have certain protocol in place um, that would help us serve our communities even before the pandemic. Um, and the organizations that represent Illinois daycare operators were not consulted uh, by the administration with this new guidance, which is not surprising. Um, the unfortunate fact is that for all of the lip service, this administration has rebuffed meaningful engagement with the frontline managers and workers to address the challenges facing our industry since day one. They seem to prefer a top-down approach that pays little attention to the real-world impacts of our policies. And um, we we've been in a in a staffing crisis before the pandemic. And we're not opposed to public health measures that would help bring this pandemic to an end, but there has to be a balance. And our industry has been in the midst of a severe and escalating staffing crisis for years. And daycare facilities in every corner of the state are closing because they cannot find enough staff to run rooms in childcare programs um, and to remain financially viable. Um, this leads to dangerous lack of access to child care for families in, in communities throughout the state, which is a key driver of the larger workforce shortage we're facing across the entire economy. And regardless of how one feels about vaccine mandates, this policy is going to lead to more daycare closures and less access to daycare slots for working families across the state. And I think it's ironic that the administration would apply a policy to our private industry that is stricter than the policy they have in place for their own state employees or contractors. So again, sharing a conversation I had with Sarah Stoliker with the Illinois owners and operators of child care centers. And uh, you know, I got her to respond to what we've heard from the governor about these mandates, especially like mandates on educators, for instance, that uh, it's uh, not just for uh, the teachers, it's also for those who interact with the community, right, uh, who have uh, elderly parents that they take care of or who have other uh, older uh, immunocompromised individuals that may be living in the community. So it's important that uh, uh, these individuals get vaccinated to help keep from spreading COVID-19 elsewhere. Um, and I got uh, Sarah Stoliker to, to react to that sentiment. And I, I think that we've been able to show and demonstrate 
again, since the beginning of this uh, pandemic, that we are not the super spreaders. We're not the we're not the source of the contagion, and we're not nursing homes either, where we have you know the age of the population is, is we're we have children that um, that bounce back very quickly. My program never have has closed one day. We went on an emergency license through the worst part of the pandemic. And still today, we have had zero cases of COVID with staff and students. So I think that we've been able to demonstrate that we're safe, we can remain safe 20 months into it. And we're going to put, you know, it's not that we have not been safe. We are we have been safe. So his his whole statement of, you know, safety is we are safe. And also we're not we cannot put more stressors on a very taxed workforce, a very thin workforce. But it's not just the vaccine mandate, it's also the testing provisions, uh, which has to cost somewhere somehow. Um, of course, if you are symptomatic, you can get a test for free. But if you're just testing, just to test, uh, that's going to have to come out of somebody's pocket. And uh, while the free tests for uh, symptomatic people are paid for by taxpayers, uh, it's still unanswered questions in a lot of these instances, not just with, uh, you know, police and fire and, uh, you know, some state workers that might have the, uh, the, the testing option, but even for daycares uh, and uh, child care centers. Uh, who's going to cover the costs for those tests, which if you're doing a test every week uh, and you've got uh, X number of employees, you can see how quickly that can add up. Uh, so there is a cost of testing, something that uh, Sarah Stoliker with the Illinois owners and operators of child care centers uh, recognizes is going to be an issue. Well, it's going to cost. Uh, it's not just it's not just the testing. I mean, who pays for the test? I don't know. Uh, how how are we going to? I just talked to an occupational therapist that came into my program today and, and she's got testing uh, bills that have not been paid. I think it was $500 worth of testing bills. I can't put that on my workforce. Um, And if it's just, and if, and I also have to pay for someone else to be in a classroom. If I'm going to send someone to go get a test, I've got to have someone else in the classroom with the children. So I'm having to pay for that labor. There's a, there's a shortage. Again, there's a shortage in, in workforce that we've been bringing to the state for years now before the pandemic. It's even worse now. And I've got to now provide another staff person in my, in my classroom to be able to cover that person out getting a test. It's very cumbersome, and it's very problematic for the industry at large. Sarah Stoliker uh, re- responded to what the uh, uh, women of the Illinois Republican Senate caucus uh, had to say, that uh, this is going to exacerbate an already stressed industry for child care centers in the state of Illinois. And if child care is not available, people aren't going to get back to work. Um, Stoliker agreeing with that sentiment. Absolutely, 100%. We have been... We have been with our megaphone for three or four years now, shouting and like, and, and saying, we need help. We need to get some resolution here on how we can bring people um, up to speed and get them teacher qualified because we are such a lack. We have programs that are closing down classrooms with wait lists because they can't hire qualified staff. Um, it's just, is very problematic. We've we've been we've been uh, again with our megaphone voicing this for years, and this is just another assault on on working women. Um, Childcare is 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 majority owned, woman owned industry, providing women with. Um, with child care and also employing women. Um, it's just, I agree with, with the, um, with the statement that those senators um, put out with them. Mm-hmm. 
So there's uh, obviously a lot of different things that are going to compound the issues and a lot of unanswered questions, Stoliker said. We've just never, we have directors and owners that have never seen this in 20 years or more that they've been working in this industry is to, to not have a classroom open, multiple classrooms open when you have a wait list. Like that, that's just not <laughs> something that they've ever seen before. So we are truly in a crisis. Um, and so the government, the governor is really not in touch um, with our industry again um, with, with this mandate. So again, that's uh, Sarah Stoliker. She is with the Illinois um directors and owners of child care centers uh, reacting to the governor's COVID-19 vaccine mandate uh, for daycare centers across the state. Uh, we'll hear a bit of reaction from uh, Republican State Senator Sally Turner. Chatted with her about this issue as well, so stay tuned. That's next here on the WMAY.